Hey y'all, it's week 20 on Wegovi, and I am so ready to get back into the swing of things. I'm also super excited about these recipes this week. We're gonna be eating some zesty shrimp and avocado tostadas, some Salisbury steak meatballs, and also some Korean barbecue tacos. So all of the recipes will be linked down in the description below, but if you're interested in a detailed calorie and macro breakdown of everything I ate this week, I'll leave a link to my fitness pal below where you can see my food diary. Anyway, if any of these recipes sound good to you, please be sure to give the video a like. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get cooking. All right, I'm gonna get started on these shrimp tostadas. So I take some liberties, surprise, surprise, with this recipe, um, and I'll kind of walk you through them, but uh, we're gonna need some kosher salt, some avocado, red onion, limes, tomato. I add cucumber and cabbage to mine. You also need cilantro. I picked up these baked tostadas. They're really good. And then you need a pound of shrimp. Uh, the recipe calls for cooked shrimp. Um, obviously I'm going to cook mine. I'm just going to, I bought them raw and I will season them and cook them the way that I like them. So let's get started. So again, the recipe just calls for cooked shrimp, but I'm going to make my own because flavor. I'm just preheating the pan with a little bit of olive oil spray in it. And we'll throw in the shrimp. And I pre-cut them up just to make it easier on myself later. And I'm gonna do a little salt. And a little pip. And some garlic, basically like a taco seasoning blend. So some coriander, a little, and you could toss the shrimp with these seasonings before you throw it in. Garlic powder, onion powder, probably like a half a teaspoon of each of these, and some cumin. Cumin's probably more like a quarter of a teaspoon. Now just kind of toss it around in the seasonings. They really shouldn't take very long to cook, but they're tiny pieces of shrimp. Maybe a minute or two. Um, I think that's done. I don't want them to overcook, they'll get real rubbery. And again, those are tiny pieces of shrimp. So let's go put the salad together. All right, so in here I have my shrimp. We're also gonna throw in, recipe calls for a tablespoon of cilantro, which I think is hilarious. Probably better if you let that shrimp cool off, but I'm hungry. Recipe calls for one medium tomato chopped, but I want more. I want more. Dick Tracy, anybody? No? Okay. Got my diamonds, got my hat, got a man I adore. Yeah, that looks good. And then the recipe calls for about a quarter cup of red onion. Probably have a little bit more because have we met? A quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. As always, if you're using regular salt, you will need less because you can fit less of them in a measuring instrument. Also need the juice from two limes. Juicy sucker. Okay. So there's our lime juice. Now, the recipe calls to add the avocado into this, and it may be okay because of all the lime juice, but the way I like to eat it is I mix up this part. The recipe also calls for jalapeno, but I'm just not feeling the spicy this week, so. Um, so once you get it to this point, this is how I store it in my fridge. Um, and then when it comes time to assemble the tostada, then I mix the avocado into whatever I'm eating for that. So this is only four servings. <laughs> It's a lot. 
So I also add cabbage and cucumber onto my, um, my tostada, but I'll show you that when I put it together. So I'm gonna put a lid on this and let it sit in the fridge for a little while, and then we'll make lunch. All right, so let's put this together. In here I have one baby mini cucumber, and I'm just dicing up half of a very small avocado. I'm gonna throw it in with the cucumber. Then I'm gonna take a quarter of my shrimp mixture ish sure and a little bit of the lime juice I'm just gonna toss that together man does that look good or what yum one of my big tostadas Right, and then I'm gonna put all of that. <laughs> it's a bit much for that little bit of tostada. You could do two if you wanted to, but. And then right on top, I'm gonna put some shredded cabbage. And boy, if that ain't pretty. Uh, yum. <laughs> Try the shrimp salad. Mm. It's so fresh and crunchy. This would also be really good with some queso fresco crumbled on top or cotija. I'm probably going to put a couple shakes of hot sauce. I know I left the jalapeno out, but I feel like it could do with a little bit of heat. But you should definitely try this. It's not a pick up and eat tostada like you saw how giant it was. It's way too big for that. But you can also eat this with some fruit. I like eating it with watermelon sometimes. I have made this recipe before, but it was a long time ago and I completely forgot about it. And I am super excited that I remembered it because it's real good. <laughs> Make this one, guys. Mm. Um, I just finished eating and I was getting ready to clean up and I realized that I completely forgot to add the avocado oil to that shrimp salad. And honestly, I don't think it needed it. <laughs> I mean, the whole recipe only called for a teaspoon anyway, so I mean, I guess it would add some richness, but there's plenty of richness from the avocado, so it's up to you. I forgot. All right, so we're going to start on these Salisbury steak meatballs. For that, we're going to need dry mustard, ground beef, ground turkey. <laughs> it's upside down. Ground turkey. Oh my gosh, my whole world is falling apart. Whatever. Okay. Ground beef, ground turkey, Worcestershire, red wine vinegar, some flour as a thickener for the sauce. We're going to use dried minced onion instead of fresh just because I want to make my life easier. The recipe calls for whole wheat breadcrumbs. I just have these Italian style. Some avocado oil. Recipe calls for reduced sodium beef broth. I have beef bouillon. Um, some mushrooms, salt and pepper, and some tomato paste. I'm going to be doubling the recipe because the recipe called for half a pound each of ground turkey and ground beef. And all of the containers that I have for ground beef and ground turkey are a pound each and I don't feel like figuring out to what to do with a half a pound each of ground turkey and ground beef plus my husband likes meat let's do this all right let's throw together these meatballs so in here I have my ground beef and my ground turkey again I'm doubling the recipe I'm gonna throw in two-thirds of a cup of breadcrumbs also gonna throw in two tablespoons of tomato paste I'm gonna eyeball this because I don't feel like digging it out of a Measuring device, that's one, two-ish. I have one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and some black pepper. Recipe calls to saute onions in oil. I'm not bothering with all of that. I'm just going to do some minced onion. And then we have two ounces of those mushrooms minced up really fine my husband likes the flavor of mushrooms but he doesn't like the texture but that will make the meatballs really moist i know how much everybody on the internet loves that word and then two eggs and and a half a cup of beef broth i reconstituted my beef bouillon so that's still a little on the warm side. I'm gonna mix up these eggs a little bit first. The hands are the best tool for this job. So 
Well, my turkey was still a little bit frozen in spite of the fact that it's been in the refrigerator for two days. So, just kind of, oh, that's cold. You know what will help with that? That's a lovely noise. Okay. So, I'm kind of doing this ahead a little bit because I don't need to make these for a while until my husband gets home, but I wanted to have this mixture waiting for me so that I wasn't doing it all last minute. I also peeled and cut up my potatoes because I'm going to serve this with some mashed potatoes because... Salisbury steak without mashed potatoes is a travesty. So we'll throw together the ingredients for, I'm just gonna put some plastic wrap on this and throw it in the fridge. And then we'll throw together the ingredients for the gravy. All right, so I've got a cup of beef broth in here. And we're gonna stir in two tablespoons of flour, slowly so that we don't get any lumps. You could also pour this into a sifter and that would help with the, to make sure you're not getting clumps of flour like that dropping in, but I'm not super concerned. Oops. I mean, I probably don't even need to be as careful as I'm being. I just, you don't like lumpy gravy. of that flour and then in here I have two teaspoons of red wine vinegar and four teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce some wash your sister sauce if you will and we're gonna pour in two tablespoons of tomato paste I have a feeling I may regret that I probably would have preferred to saute that first but it's gonna cook for a while with the meatballs, so it should be fine. Also going to add in some more minced onion. I like my Salisbury steak gravy good and oniony, so. And then, interesting ingredient, a teaspoon of mustard powder, or excuse me, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder. Okay, and we'll just set that aside until we're ready to pour it onto our meatballs. All right, start working on these meatballs. Just preheating this pan with some oil. And I'm gonna make these a bit larger than the recipe calls for, just cause I don't feel like making 40 meatballs. So, we're going like ice cream scoop size. Well, that one's a little bigger, isn't it? It's good. So I'm pulling the first batch out. They're not like fully cooked or anything, but they're past the point of falling apart, which is what I'm interested in. And while those other ones are browning, I'm just gonna give these mushrooms a head start. The recipe calls to just throw it in with the broth. That sounds sad. Good enough with those meatballs. 
I'm put these back in the pan. This sauce we made. I'm going to add just a little bit more liquid to that. I feel like it's not very much. And if I need to add more salt later, then that's fine. Then we're going to cover that and let it cook on the stove top for 20 minutes. Oh, that don't look bad. Can you see? <laughs> Pretty sure these are cooked. Yeah. Man, they smell good. All right, let me taste that gravy, see if it needs any seasoning. Oh, yum. It's a little on the salty side, but it tastes real good. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it be because we're gonna eat the gravy over the potatoes and I think it'll be fine. It's a little different than the Salisbury steak gravy I'm used to, but I mean, it ain't bad. It's, I mean, it's very tasty. It's got plenty of flavor. It's funny. I sat down and I, normally I read reviews before I do a recipe, but with skinnytaste.com, like I have yet to find a recipe that I don't really enjoy. Um, and I do have tendencies to take liberties because I know how I like things. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that on low until my husband gets home. Um, so, like I was saying, I normally read reviews for recipes before I try making them. But with the SkinnyTaste.com recipes, I've used so many and I have yet to find one that I don't like. So, I don't really bother. Um, I will say that this recipe, like when you look at the recipe online, it says that it's like for stovetop, instant pot, or crock pot. And there were a bunch of people that had a really hard time with this recipe because they tried making it in the Instant Pot. Um, I don't like trying to brown things like meatballs in an Instant Pot. Like it's too unwieldy, the sides are too high. Um, I don't mind sauteing things like onions and mushrooms and or like a big roast or, you know, stuff like that. But like sauteing something fiddly like meatballs, especially for as small as she calls them to be in her recipe. Like I did mine a little less than twice the size of what her recipe called for because the recipe, like a single recipe called for 20 meatballs, a double recipe called for 40. And I think I had like 24 or 25 meatballs, something like that. So anyway, I, like everybody was saying that the meatball mixture was too soft and that like people were saying, don't put the broth in it. And I mean, you saw the texture, it was fine. I didn't have any issues. Maybe that's because I let it rest in the fridge, but I mean, it really only rested in the fridge for maybe 10 minutes, if that. So I think that the way to go with this one is stovetop. You're really not saving any time by doing it in the Instant Pot. Um, it's like 10 minutes on pressure as opposed to 20 minutes on the stovetop. I wouldn't bother with the Instant Pot in that case. I love using the Instant Pot for things like roasts where you're only cooking it for an hour instead of four. You know, that makes sense to me, but to save 10 minutes, like, no, I'll just do it on the stovetop. So I definitely recommend following the stovetop instructions <laughs> um, as I did. So anyway, I'll come back when we do the taste test. All right, we're gonna try out these Salisbury steak meatballs. Hmm. Those meatballs have a very nice texture. These are really good. You should give these a try. The green beans are <laughs> just like a little bit of brown sugar, um, buttery steakhouse seasoning that Kinder's buttery steakhouse, and some balsamic vinegar. Um, with a tiny bit of oil just to get it going with like my favorite green beans but anyway this is fantastic you should make it just don't do it in the instant pot mm. all right we're gonna get the beef marinating for our korean barbecue tacos we're gonna need some soy sauce i have some low sodium so we're gonna use that some sesame oil brown sugar a beef roast it doesn't specify what size i had originally planned on doubling this recipe and then i thought differently of it so I took the second roast that I bought and I put it in the freezer um, this is ginger I always freeze my ginger because it makes it a million times easier to grate 
and it'll stay good in the freezer for a very long time. Uh, we need a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic, so I will probably use the rest of that head. Um, and then this is a Korean pear. Um, it looks like a big apple. I got this at my at H Mart, but they often have them at H E B. So just check if for some reason you can't get an Asian pear. You know, just a regular pear will work fine. But these have a very distinct flavor, and the enzymes help break down the protein and make your meat tender. And then red pepper flakes. These are Korean red pepper flakes called gochugaru, and they are delicious. Let's throw this together. Okay, so the recipe does not say to do this, but I'm going to anyway because I think that it always helps make meat more tender when you're going to be shredding it. Um, I'm going to be just cutting this up into some very large chunks. So literally, I'm just going to cut it in half. Come on, friend. This is a shoulder roast. Oh, hello. Yeah, don't eat that. That's not delicious. This is a shoulder roast, so it's very lean. If it was a chuck roast, I would take out some of the big pockets of fat, but I don't need to worry about that. So just going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to do like probably four-ish. So it's not a ton, but it helps break up those fibers so they're not quite so long, and it will make it less chewy, and they will cook a little bit faster. And I'm going to set these to the side while we make our marinade. So I just wanted to show you this really quick. If you've never seen one of these or if you have seen one of these and you've never used them before um this is a garlic peeler it's a little <laughs> hi helios it's a little silicone ring this one's from pampered chef but you can find them on amazon um and peeling garlic is a pain in the butt but you basically just stick a clove in there and you just roll it like that and it literally just peels it in like two seconds so i highly recommend these if you're a big fan of garlic they just like save you a ton of time peeling your garlic. And then once I've got all these peeled, I'm going to go ahead and crush them. So I also wanted to show you this. So this is my frozen ginger. And if you have ever tried to grate fresh ginger, you will know how much of a pain in the butt it is. But when it's frozen, it literally just like turns into powder like immediately. I don't even bother peeling it. We only need a tablespoon. I mean, this is very aerated, so that's probably about the equivalent of a tablespoon of ginger paste that you find in the tube. I'm just gonna finish the rest of this little nub because I really like the flavor of ginger, but that's just me. And that's it. If this had been fresh, that would have taken me five minutes. I do really like grating garlic for marinades though. I feel like it breaks up all the cell walls a little bit better and you get more allicin, which is the compound that brings out kind of all that lovely aroma and flavor. And the more of that you have, the more flavor will penetrate into the meat. So if you can do a paste for marinades, it's usually better. So there's our garlic and ginger. Okay, so this Asian pear is huge, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and use half of it for this marinade. And then I'm gonna take out the core and I'm gonna freeze the other half because I can use this again. Um, this is also really good for bulgogi marinades, for galbi marinades. Pretty much any marinade from Korean cuisine is gonna have Korean pear in it. So, I mean, you can just eat it. Um, I'm not, like if I'm gonna eat a pear, this is the one I would eat because it's more apple-like. Um, I don't love the texture of pears. Um, but anyway, just going to remove these and stick them in a plastic baggie and put it in the freezer. And then that way, if I want to do another Korean roast or, um, Korean barbecue beef with that roast I have in there, I can, but it'll get used regardless. And then I'm just going to grate this on a cheese grater. So I'm going to use the small side. Oh, it does say to peel it, doesn't it? Oopsie. My bad. So the recipe says to peel it, so I'm going to go ahead and peel it. All right, we're peeled. Try that again. It's a lot easier. So it's going to be a lot of juice, which is a big part of why you grate it, because the juice is what has the enzyme in it. Or rather, the juice is going to make the enzyme get into the meat a little easier. that that was very fibrous okay and get this half grated what are you doing in there helios okay oh no oh no oh no, no. 
think about that. Shoot. My juice just poured all over my counter. Shoot. What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna use that. It's setting. It's delicious flavor. Learn from my mistakes, only break one half at a time. All right, so I'm gonna marinate this in a plastic bag. Fold that over so that hopefully we don't make a huge mess. This is my soy sauce, sesame oil, and the Asian pear. And then this is two tablespoons of brown sugar and a tablespoon of that Korean red pepper flake. I know the Korean red pepper looks scary, but it is not very spicy. So I'm just going to kind of, no, I'm not going to bother. It makes me nervous. We've already had ones built today. Okay, and then I'm going to add in my beef. And then I'm going to be cooking this for dinner tonight. It would be really good if you could do it overnight. I just, I was way too lazy last night to do that. So I had been cooking all day and we had a surprise inspection from our apartment complex today. So I had to do some stuff to my back porch last night. And yeah, anyway, it just didn't happen yesterday. So now I'm going to get as much air as possible out of this bag. And then I'm going to smoosh it around. Definitely could have used a bigger roast. This was only about a two pound roast. So if you can do like a three or four pounder, there's enough marinade for that, just so you know. And then just burp a little bit more of the air out of here. The less air you have, the more contact the marinade will have with the meat. I'm just gonna set it inside a bowl and put this in my fridge until I need to cook it tonight so that it doesn't leak or whatever in my fridge. All right. Tis the time to put the meat in the pot. Okay. Well, that don't smell bad. Okay, so just gonna dump the meat and all of the marinated goodness up in there. And the recipe says to do this on high for 40 minutes. I'm gonna do it for an hour just because I'm extra. I'm gonna put that on pressure. Pressure cook it on high for forward an hour and while we're letting that cook we'll put together my coleslaw that will go in the tacos so I have this sesame sweet Asian salad um, the recipe said that the Taylor Farms Asian salad is probably the best and I agree it's really really good but for some reason my H-E-B stopped carrying it and so did my Sam's Club so I do know this one is good I just don't like it as much it has kale in it for some reason which Nah. Um, I don't mind kale, it's just not my absolute favorite in an Asian salad. So I'm going mis to mix the dressing first. So the salad comes with this little packet of wontons and nuts and stuff, which I'm sure is, well I know is delicious in the salad, but I don't think I need it in my tacos, so I'm just going to toss that. I might throw some on my tacos just because I have the calories for it included in my calculation, but so this is what we're after is the dressing, and we only need about half of this. Okay. Mm, say that's about a half. Okay, lovely. And then I'm gonna put in some sriracha. I'm not measuring any of this. Oh, I haven't opened this yet. <laughs> that would be helpful. Ooh, look how red it is. It's been so long since I've had a new bottle of sriracha. I went through my condiments last week when I was cleaning out the fridge, and the bottle of sriracha I had expired in 2019. <laughs> I mean, it's a fermented sauce, so I'm really not that worked up about it, but I was like, mm, it's probably time to get rid of you, friends. And the recipe calls for half a cup of mayo, which I think is kind of excessive. I'm probably going to do like maybe a quarter cup. And then I'm going to taste it. I mean, if I want to add more of the Asian in it, dressing in to compensate, it's fine. I already included the in my macros. I already included the entire Asian salad, so I don't feel bad if I end up doing that. Let's taste this. Well, it isn't bad, but yeah, I think it could use a little bit more of this and definitely use some more of this. The sriracha is definitely to your taste, depending on how spicy you like things. Mmm. 
Yep, that's yummy. And a teeny bit more sriracha. Maybe. I like it a spice. You can also add some more of that gochugaru in here. The Korean red pepper flake. And that would add more spice without adding more of the sriracha funk. Mm-hmm. It's yummy. I'm just going to dump the rest of this in there. Yep, that's not bad. Okay. And we're going to dump this salad in there. I may also end up adding some uh, cilantro to this. I know that the Taylor Farm salad has some cilantro in it, and this one does not. I think that would be really yummy, but I may just end up sprinkling it on my tacos at the end. But yeah, I'm happy about not adding all that mayonnaise. I know when I saw Mandy make this, um, I got this recipe from Mandy in the making, by the way, if you've never watched her channel, she's absolutely adorable. I'll link it in the description below. Um, but when I saw her make this, it looked really like overly sauced. Like it looked like it had too much on it and this looks perfect to me. Let me taste it. Oh, uh, yep. Mmm. Yep, that's yummy. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yum, yum, yum. Just gonna stick some plastic wrap on this and shove it in the fridge until dinner time. All right, this is just finishing releasing all the pressure. And it smells real good. I'm not gonna lie to you. And even though I did an hour, it's still not as tender as I would like it. Oh, I think it's gonna be okay, maybe. Pork shoulder is not as tender as um like a chuck roast would be. Chuck roast would be ideal, but pork shoulder or excuse me, beef shoulder roast is what was on sale. So that's what we did. I think this could still be okay. I'm gonna show you guys a trick for shredding your and this works for chicken too. I'm just gonna use an electric hand mixer. And just kind of you can just do it on low and you just run the thing in there. It works better when there's not quite so much sauce, but you just kind of force the meat through the little tongs and it shreds everything up. But you want it in the sauce so that it absorbs all of that once it's shredded. And then you'll just kind of take the meat out. So this you can always also do in like rice bowls or whatever you want. I could put this back in again under pressure like I have enough time so if I can't get this to shred like I want it to then I may let it go a little bit longer but I think after a couple more passes it'll be just fine I mean you can always take it out and do it with your hands but I don't want to so normally when the meat is super tender like this is done in like two seconds so I promise this is normally really fast and then you don't have to do it by hand. So, <laughs> you got a chunk in there. Yep, that's not bad. Mm. See. Yeah, it's still got a fair amount of chunkage in there and that should be completely dissolved. I'm gonna put this back on pressure for another 20 or 30 minutes because I have time and then we'll come back and try that again round two okay let's try this again one more again let's see yeah it just needed a little bit longer yeah that should shred up no problem now we go good and shreddy now you can just put that on top of steamed rice or in tacos like we're doing or you can just eat it out of a bowl if you want I'm not gonna tell you how to eat and that's all there is to it bon appetit mm.
excited about this. Okay. These are going to be messy, I'm pretty sure. That's, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Make these. They're so good. The slaw is yummy. I did add a little bit more seasoning to the beef because it was very salty. Only very one note. Um, had good flavor. It just needed a little help. I added a tiny bit more brown sugar. I also had some gochujang in my fridge, which is a Korean red pepper paste. And I added a little bit of that. And I also added some more of the Korean red pepper flakes. So it just wasn't like it didn't have much of a kick at all. It needed more spice to me. I think I also added a splash of mirin and a splash of um, rice wine vinegar. I just happen to do a lot of Asian cooking. So I have a lot of just random stuff in my pantry. And I just kind of threw some stuff in. So it's really good. Um, if you've ever been to a place that has bulgogi tacos, it's very reminiscent of that. Um, I probably prefer the texture of the thinly sliced beef to the shredded, but I mean, it's still really good. Um, the flavor is definitely there. And that slaw is money. Like that would be good in any circumstance. <laughs> uh, you could definitely beef it up with more cabbage. Um, I think you saw I used all of the sesame dressing and I like halved the amount of mayonnaise, but you could put even more cabbage in that and it would be, it would be really good. So Anyway, definitely give these a shot. They are delicious. Yum. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and let me know down in the comments which recipe you're planning to try. I post cooking and weight loss results videos every week, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can find out how much weight I lost eating all these delicious recipes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.